Hi everyone, thank you for joining this session. My name is Nimrod Geva and I manage Quizcon product group. And today I'm going to speak about several apps that we've just recently released. You won't find these apps in the Microsoft App Store like all other Quizcom apps because they are based on the uh, Microsoft SharePoint framework, SPFX. Uh, and as for now, SPFX apps cannot be published uh, on the Microsoft App Store. So uh, in case you want to check them out, you, need, you, you just need to go to Quizcom website and download these apps uh, from there. So what is the data view tools for SharePoint Online? Uh, this is a bunch, it's a bunch of web parts, client web parts that are doing quite the same thing. They're, they're all about retrieving data from various sources and display the, uh, this data in a super flexible and convenient UI, much more flexible and, and convenient from what you get with SharePoint out of the box. This enables uh, you to uh, 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 create the user experience which you need for your specific usage scenarios. And I'll be showing several usage scenarios uh, as examples of what you can do uh, with this tool set. So what do we have here? I'm going to speak about three apps, uh, the Remote List Viewer, the Quizcom Aggregator, and the Image Gallery. The Remote List Viewer allows you to connect to a single list or library. Uh, this list can be local or remote on a different, located on a different site or site collection. And then uh, you can display the data, as I mentioned before, in this super flexible uh, UI. Quizcom Aggregator connects to a different data source. This data source is a kind of a query that you can configure. So it aggregates uh, data from uh, multiple sites and site collections. And then again, using the same uh, UI mechanism to display the results the way you need. And finally, Image Gallery is doing quite the same. You'll see when I'll uh, show it that it has some additional display controls that you can use that are more relevant to image display. We have additional apps coming up which belong to the same tool set. These are the Calendar Plus app, uh, which again can connect to a single list or aggregate events from multiple uh, lists and also from additional sources such as Exchange Calendar. And display them in a, a calendar uh, uh, relevant controls such as daily, weekly, monthly view, agenda view, and so on. And the Chart Plus, which can display chart based on various sources such as single list or aggregating mo uh, aggregation results or Excel sheets. Both these apps are coming up real soon. Now, in case you need more than just of these uh, apps or web parts, uh, we have also the Data View Plus app, which is available today. And this app is uh, a superset of all the apps that you see below. So it includes all the features and the display controls that you have in the uh, apps below. So this is kind of a, uh, of a Swiss knife of, of data retrieval and display. Now, how does it work? I mentioned several times that we have a super flexible UI. So no matter which of these web parts you're using, it connects to its relevant uh, data sources. And once it's connected, it allows you to decide how to display it. And I'm talking about several uh, available um, data display controls, such as table control and list control, uh, and also uh, filtering control, navigation control, grouping controls, so you get to decide on which controls are displayed in which order and, and you've got lots of uh, properties to uh, configure 
to really fine tune uh, the exact UI and also functionality that you want to provide your users for this specific uh, usage scenario. Okay, so enough with the slides. What I'm gonna do now, I'm going to start showing you some examples. And the first example I'd like to show you is, th is the basics. How to connect to a data source and how to compose your uh, UI Lego style. So let's get started. I have here an empty new experience page and let's edit it. And I'm going to add the remote list viewer app. So you got here all these apps from Microsoft and some from Quizcom. And I'm going to select the remote list viewer. Now, once you add the remote list viewer to the page, you can edit it. I'm clicking edit web part icon here. And this is the experience of the SPFX uh, web parts. You've got this tool pane on the right, which can be extended and I'll show you how it's extended. And we chose, it, it has several options. We chose the option that allows you to see immediately the result of your configuration in the web part. So every change I make in any of the properties, you see that it's reflected immediately in the web part. So first thing I need to do with the remote list viewer is connect it to its source. And in this case, the source is a single list or library. It can be local if I leave it here, the SharePoint site URL property, I leave it as is, it will allow me to select a local list. But in this case, I'm going, I want to use um, a remote list. So I'm going to take the URL here and I'm gonna copy it here. And I'm going to another site, that's it. And Let's select a task list. I like to choosing the task list because it has many types of properties. And you can also select the view. Selecting the view will, uh, uh, will define the columns that you see in your display. You can also limit the number of returned items. Uh, by default, we'll limit it to 100, but you can just remove the limit and, and get all the information from your list. Let's see the result here. So I'm closing the tool pane and let's save the page for now. Okay, so as you can see, you have several parts in this um, uh, table. First of all, you have a, a top menu bar. Let's increase the size a bit. So this is the top menu bar. Currently it has out of the box two menus. One of them allows me to uh, select all items. And once I select them, I see how many items are selected. And the other one is allows me to delete item. Once I select some items here, I'll be able to delete them. Below I can see a kind of a grid, which is very similar to the uh, uh, out of box list view. Um, it shows me the columns that are available in the view that I selected, but you can also see I have some item level actions. And these are the out of the box item level actions. I'll show you a bit later how you, how you can uh, configure this and, and completely change it to the actions that you need. So for example, you have here uh, view properties or you can send um, some of the, uh, the item properties by email and so on. You can edit the item and so on. Now below this table, you see a paging control, which allows you to change the paging and also navigate between pages. And finally, you have another uh, menu bar and in this case, it allows you to create a new item. So this is the out of the box behavior once you put, you, you just connect it to a source. Let's change the layout a bit and start playing Lego here. So in order to change the layout, you need to click the open designer button. 
this opens the template designer you can work as a, as a tool pane with it or you can click here to make it a bit wider I prefer to stay with the um, tool pane layout because it allows me to see the results immediately uh, on the web part so the first properties are just allowing you to um, change the title subtitle and small title currently there's only a small title here and as you can see it displays a kind of a formula uh, so the title can be dynamic for example in this case it displays the uh, the name of the list but I didn't write this um, script or whatever it is if you click edit formula you see that you have some snippets and I just use the data source title snippet and it embeds this script that you can change of course now let's go ahead and I'm going to the main con content node here this is the root node of my display so as I said everything is built out of controls this is like Lego so you can see that the first uh, control that, you, that I have here is the menu bar and this is the menu bar and what you can do you can configure the menu bar and then select what is included inside the menu bar so it's kind of a hierarchy of controls let's see what configurations we have here so the menu bar has top actions and it has two top actions select no label and delete selected these are the two actions that you see here okay so going back I have two actions in the, at the top area and I have also bottom actions I have only a single action which is new item this is the action that you you saw here below the new item so actually this bar and the top bar are both part of the same control which is the menu bar of course I can delete any of the actions I don't want or add additional actions we'll get to it next you have the menu bar content which defines the next control that you, you will be available in the UI and the menu bar includes the paging control but as you can see we don't see the paging control right after the menu bar we see it here below the table so how come it says that it's right after the menu bar so if we go into the paging control configuration you see that the, there's a property called show paging above content and show paging below content so the above content is set to off if we set it to on then you see immediately here the paging control top bar but I'll leave it to uh, show it only below the content and also you can control the page size and uh, some additional controls now after the paging control the paging control content includes table this is the table that you see here okay if we configure the table you see that um, uh, it has these item actions and you see one two three four item actions these are the item actions that you saw here and of course each of them can be changed we'll get to it okay let's change the structure here let's say I want to um, have a filter so after the menu bar below the menu bar let's go to the menu bar I don't want to see the paging instead I want to see a filter control okay so by default the fil filter control displays just one text box which, which searches all the text fields so let's start typing here a a a a so immediately it filters all the items that have uh, four a's in them okay but I want a more uh, comprehensive filter not just a text search so let's get the, to the filter control and configure it so I'm clicking the config uh, sorry I'm clicking the configure filter so as you see show free text filter it's on 
and let's add some columns. I want to filter by columns. So let's filter by um, tasks uh, status. And I want to also filter by um, due date maybe. And let, let's leave it like this. Okay, so let's see the result. So we see, we see the result immediately, of course. Let's get rid of the editing experience here. Okay, so let's see how it works. Of course, I can select uh, the, the status that I want to filter by. Currently, I, it, and it shows only what you have here, of course. And so I can filter by in progress. I can select multiple values or I can say, show me everything except the selected. And what I can do, and this is true for every type of filter, I can type. So if I want to, sh to see only the tasks that are not started, it's enough to write not. And it will show me only the tasks uh, that are not started. So you can filter any way you want. And this is true also for uh, date spans. So you can uh, select the available dates, okay? Or you can uh, use the control, the date control, to uh, select a date range. So I see it starts from 2016 somewhere. So let's take this range. Okay, and I can also type uh, a, a date range. It doesn't matter. Whatever you, it's good for you. Now, let's say I, I, I'm an end user. I'm not the one who designs the web parts and I want to filter by additional properties here. So I don't need to wait for uh, the, the admin to change the web part properties. I can always just take the column that I want to filter by and drag it here to the filter area and only for me, of course, it will add this uh, filtering control. So, and this is good for the current session. So this is the filter control. Um, let's do some more changes. Sometimes we want to, um, let's open the designer. Someone, so sometimes we need to group items, like show them in, in, in separate sections or in separate tabs so how about instead of the filter i know let's leave the filter just above the table i'll replace the table with uh, a tabs control so now i have as you can see the tasks are uh, filtered are uh, sorry grouped by not by their status so i have 12 uh, tasks in not started status and five in in progress status. Let's see what we can do with this tab control, how we can configure it. So let's configure the tabs. So I can control by, by which column uh, the tabs are grouped. So let's say I want to group this by priority instead of, um, instead of status. So now it's grouped by the priority. And also I can, uh, you see some formula here. Again, I didn't write it, it just, uh, I said I used a snippet from here, but what it does, it shows you here the number of items in the tab. And uh, let's render this as tabs. It will just change the background to look more um, look more like tabs, okay? So I have both the filter and the tabs and uh, no, I remove the paging, I can add paging and so on. Um, how about ch changing the table here and showing something more like this? So now we have a list display and of course I can control whatever you see in each line. Uh, but this display is better for handheld devices because it's responsive, uh, looking more like a cell phone or a tablet display. 
So this is just part of the Lego here that you can do. You can control having the tabs above the filter or after the filter, and of course, everything works uh, together, okay? So this is the basic how you select your controls and then configure them according to your uh, requirements. Moving on to the next demo. So up until now, we just used the remote list viewer and we connected it to a single list. Now I would like to use another uh, web part from this data view toolset, which is the uh, Quizcom aggregator. And this time I'm going to aggregate data from multiple sites. So let's go on to my, oh, sorry, before that, I wanted to show you also the, uh, the image gallery control. So here I have the image gallery control. This is just one of the display controls. I'll show you in a minute how it was configured. Um, so it displays a pile of images currently, but I can also filter. And this is because I'm using the filter control above the photo pile control. So I can say, okay, I want to see only uh, the images taken in Madrid. And of course I tagged the images properly. So I have some images uh, from, from Madrid, okay? So how is it configured? Let's edit the page again and open the designer. First I'll open the, the, the tool pen. So you see it's connected to a single list called picture, it's a, it's a library. And as for the design, I'm opening the designer so you see the main content includes the filter and the filter is configured very basically. I'm just showing the free text filter here. I, I could add more columns, but I don't need. And below you see it shows a photo pile control, which is relevant to the image gallery. It has some additional uh, controls like uh, camera slideshow or uh, picture gallery. Let's see the camera slideshow for a second. Let's save this and show it. Yeah, so I need to configure, of course, the size of the images here, make it 80% or 70%. But this one just rotates between images or let me uh, choose my image. Just to let you see, if I want to configure the size of the images in the camera slideshow, um, I have these configurations. So currently it shows 100%, but I can change it, of course, to show it properly uh, on my um, on my <coughs> web part to to fit the the, the page that we, the size that we have. Okay, and there are many other um, settings that you can do. I personally like the photo pile. Uh, which is kind of nice. Okay, let's go ahead to the aggregation scenario. So here I, s I have uh, the list aggregator, which looks quite the same as the remote list viewer, because as I mentioned, they all have the same UI mechanism, which works with these configurable controls. But as you can see, and let me show you now, the data source is completely different. So let's open the uh, list, aggregator, list aggregator data source. And here you see you are uh, defining, you're, you're, we're connecting not to a single list. What we're doing here is we're, we're defining a query first because in order to aggregate, you need to, to define a query. Um, now, we are not asking you, we are not showing a kind of designer that requires you to define your query. We're using a built-in mechanism in SharePoint. As you know, a list view is actually a query definition because it allows you to define the exact columns that you want to retrieve and the exact condition uh, which will be used to, to search for uh, relevant items and also sorting. And so, 
what you are asked here is simply to select a list view uh, that will be used as the query definition. This list is not used, uh, the data inside this list is not important, we're just using this list view definition. So here I chose a view, the task, the all, I, the all tasks view in the task list in the current site. And I also define maximum number of items to retrieve. I can also define, uh, configure maximum number to retrieve per, per list. Um, so this is the query definition. Next, you can create one or more data sources, which define the scope on which you will run this query, this view. So as you can see, I have a single uh, uh, data source. Let's see how it's configured. So once you click it, you see the uh, data source configuration um, pop up. So I gave it the name project sites because it aggregates uh, tasks from uh, several project sites. I have three project sites below this site. And then I configured the aggregation scope and you can choose from several aggregation scopes. You can um, uh, aggregate the entire site collection or a specific site or a specific site and subsite, which I'm, this is what I'm doing now, or a specific list. And then you, because I choose uh, specific site and subsite, then you, you, you can say, okay, where is the root we, uh, from which you want to start the aggregation? It can be the current site, it can be a site on another site collection. And then it offers me uh, its subsites because maybe I want to start not from the current site, but maybe from one of its subsites. And then I have this couple of uh, properties that allow me to fine tune my query furthermore. So maybe I don't want to aggregate everything from the current site and subsite, and subsite so I can limit it to lists and libraries that um, have their name according to some pattern. And same goes to um, the site. I can limit the, the crawled sites where I search only to sites that have some naming pattern. Then you can see I chose the task list type. You can select several list types here, not just one. I selected just the tasks. And then you can also limit by content type. And finally, you need to make it enabled or disabled. It's up to you. And this way you can create several such uh, data sources. And this view will be executed or run on all these um, data sources and this is the result of course I also added here uh, some search some filtering and and tabs um, this is not new I already talked about it so this is the list aggregator now one thing is very important to um, emphasize and I didn't do it going back to the to the data source please notice that this is a dynamic aggregation scope. And when I say dynamic, I mean that I don't know how many sites will be aggregated because this scope defines the, uh, the scope of specific site and all subsites. And it's very important because imagine you have a similar scenario, like you want to aggregate milestones or tasks or risks or whatever from all your project sites. Now, Project sites are dynamically created on a weekly or a monthly basis. Of course, you don't want to be in a situation where you need to update this data source each time a new project is created, each time a new project site is created below. So therefore, I chose this uh, scope uh, instead of choosing the exact uh, sites that I want to aggregate. And this is very important because I saw other solutions that allow you to select the exact sites. We want to avoid it. We want, we don't want you to, to be in a situation where you need to maintain uh, the, the settings of this report every time the data below changes. So this is the meaning of dynamic aggregation scope. Okay, let's move forward to my next demo. 
So what I'm going to do now is show you some more advanced customizations. And when I say advanced, if you remember when I showed you the list aggregator and the list viewer, they all had uh, a top menu bar and bottom menu bar and also item actions. These are the actions that you get out of the box when you, uh, when you add the, the web part to the page. Now, these actions are actually written in Knockout, in, in JavaScript. So you can replace these item actions and add your own by simply writing script. So this opens the door to many scenarios uh, allowing you to implement whatever you need uh, to provide a more convenient UI for your business scenario. And I'm going to show you a couple of nice examples. Uh, I'll start with the most simple one. You see th this one also aggregates, this is a list aggregator aggregating tasks from the same uh, three sub sites exactly as this one does, but it looks different because I don't have the filter and it shows a different uh, list control rather than table control. And you can see what I did here. I configured the second line to show uh, the assigned to and the status. And I configured here uh, this line to show the due date and it it's colored red uh, if the due date is over and color blue if it's okay. So let me show you how it's done. Going to the, uh, this, uh, let's open the designer here. And I'm going to the list control. This is the control that displays this list. So look at this. We have the title first. The title shows the title. This is the first line. It's the, uh, the task name. Then we have the subtitle, which shows assigned to and the name of the user to whom it's assigned, and then the status. So you see it here. Let's open it in the. So you see it's written. It, this this is knockout. I can. I'm binding the values using this text token, and then I'm showing assigned to string, and then next to it the field, the column called assigned to. And I'm adding the status string and then I'm adding the status column. So this is how you can write in a formula exactly what you want here to be written. So this is this line. And then I have the, uh, the description line. Description line shows the created by uh, users. So again, it shows, um, I'm just checking if it's undefined. So this is a, a JavaScript uh, condition so there is I I don't have to use it but it's just better uh, writing so it checks if the uh, this field called author is not undefined then write create by and add author the author column finally there's the small field which is on the right here which is colored depending on the value so you see it has this formula, show the text due date, and then uh, add the due date field to it. And then I have this style uh, uh, string here that defines this, this style. Again, depending on the, if, if the date is uh, uh, delayed or not. So this is basic formatting. Let's move to a more, uh, to some other uh, customizations that you can do here. In this example, uh, I created a, a movie night uh, library for my team, uh, for my team to select what movie they prefer us all to go in the next uh, team, uh, team event. So this is again a, a, a list aggregator. It aggregates um, from this list, from the team movie night. And I have in the team, uh, in this list also uh, uh, the YouTube link uh, to, the, uh, to the trailer. So I, if you can see, I changed some of the actions here. First action is view trailer and the second action, I like this movie. Let's have a look at the view trailer. So when I click it, it opens the trailer which allows me to see it now let's see how it's 
uh, how it was customized. So I'm opening the designer again, configuring this table, and I'm going to the item actions. So this is the video action. Let's see what I did here. So first of all, you select your icon and the tooltip, and then you have this JavaScript. And you can do whatever you do you want in this JavaScript. It, it enables you to render uh, your HTML to connect to whatever you want. The only part that you need to know how to work with our list aggregator or remote list viewer, it's, it's all the same, it's how to get um, the values of a certain property. And this is the magic line. You see, item dot and the name of the field. This is the name of the field. So it's it item is the entry point or the object that allows you to get the properties. And you see it also here, item dot, and then the name of the property that you want. From here, it's just plain JavaScript connecting to a YouTube service and then uh, rendering uh, the, the, the HTML that you want, this, this uh, pop-up, this div layer that in, uh, displays the, the trailer. But that, that, that has nothing to do with Quizcom. Th this is just JavaScript. The only thing that you need to know to connect to this web part is the item object and then the name of the property. And by the way, this explanation appears just here. You see, your function will receive blah, blah, blah. So you have several parameters that you can use. One of them is item that I used here just to get the the property, but you can do some a lot more things. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you here, you have the I have another example which is called um, event budget request. I have uh, future events that I plan to attend, and I uh, each uh, each event is taking place in some city and uh, it has an organizer and it has a date and I can uh, filter by city like let's say let's look for all the event in Toronto so these two are in Toronto I can also just select the the cities and so on but okay this is the filter control it's not new what I change here I added two uh, it item actions one the first one is called show on map and when I click it, it just opened uh, the Google map and shows the city in the map. It's very simple because I'm just using a URL from Google where you uh, provide the city name is the first parameter in the URL. And so it works uh, for all cities. And the second one I added here is the call button. So I have a property, a column in this list, which is the organizer phone number and when I click it it just opens oh it opened on my next on my second window it opens Skype for business in this case and allows me to uh, call this number okay so these two are very simple to to uh, customize because these are just URLs that I used let me show you how simple it is again I'm opening the designer and that's configured the list control. This is a list control and it has the action. So I have here the action of show on map. So I chose an icon and let's look at the script again. Now, bottom line, I'm using this URL. This is a URL from Google. Allow me to show uh, a city which is provided here in this token. And what, I, what I'm to get the city name, the city is a column in my list. Again, I'm using item dot and the, num and the name of the column. So item dot city, that's it. From here, it's plain JavaScript connecting and displaying this uh, HTML pop-up that uh, shows the map in size. So this is pure JavaScript. The only interface you need to know is again, this item object dot column. And same goes for uh, the call action, the phone call action. 
so it's a different icon but the script is very very um, simple I'm just getting the field name the work phone so again it's item dot work phone and that's it all I need to know is to put it in the link here which is a tell link and that's it so it's super really really simple to create um, whatever actions that you want to to have here an interface with the columns that we have in in our web part the last example that I wanted to show you cell tower maintenance I have here some uh, coordinates of locations of, of uh, uh, cell towers and in case I want to send someone I added uh, two action one is an item action which allows me to see a coordinate in a Google map and also you can select multiple items and click a global action here which says show on map and again I'm using a URL from um, from Google and I'm using the item object to get the name of these properties and send them use them in this URL to get what what I want and then I'm rendering it in, in a nice pop-up okay so I think that's it Um, as, as all our web parts, you can download a free trial from our website. Just go to uh, quizcom.com and under Office 365 uh, menu, you will see uh, uh, this uh, submenu and under data visualization tools, you'll see all these apps that I mentioned uh, here. Just download the app, add it to your tenant and uh, it's an unlimited free trial you just see uh, a message and once you decide you like the web part just contact us uh, and I'll take questions now thank you